Businesses against Obamacare are making some headway. The Obamacare lawsuit went before a three-judge appellate court and faced pretty much the same kind of questions posed by the earlier judge, and now he ruled that the health care law violates the Constitution's question, questions like uh, whether Congress could pass a similar law which would require Americans to buy certain types of cars or solar panels to comply with federal energy policy were asked. All this was music to the ears of our next guest, director, executive director of the NFIB's Small Business Legal Center. Karen Harnett is heading up the lawsuit against Obamacare. She's joined by small business owner Grady Payne. He's the CEO of Connor Industries who says he supports the suit because the new law could put his company out of business. He joins us now from Dallas. Good to see you both. So, Karen, first of all, this new judge, it sounds like he's going to make the same ruling as the previous judge against Obamacare. Well, that would be our hope, but we'll have to wait and see what the decision is. But it was a good day for those of us that challenge um, the constitutionality of the individual mandate. The judges were very concerned, once again, with the fact that the government seems to be unable to say what Congress wouldn't, couldn't require us all to purchase right. uh, or do if the individual mandate is allowed to stay. Brady, tell us a little bit about your business and how Obamacare would affect it. Well, we're a middle-sized company. Uh, we're, uh, we have 450 employees. We're larger than the small exemptions, which uh, allows for 50, and when we're too big for a really large company so we can self-insure. We pretty much have to get in, get our insurance coverage through bids and quotes through the, the programs that are out there. Our company's 30 years old. We started in 81, and uh, this is our 30th year anniversary. Uh, the law mandates uh, expenses that's new to us. It's going to change the way we have to look at the way we do business. Uh, it's basically charging money that we don't have to uh, spend. It, they're classified as penalties. Uh, if we elect to keep insurance and offer to, every, to everyone, which we've done, and they turn it down because it's too expensive, then what happens is we're under the, the program we're going to owe a $3,000 penalty, which is not tax deductible for the people that don't take it. If we And just a management decision today probably is going to make, uh, force us to eliminate coverage altogether and force all of our uh, co employees, all of us, to go out to an exchange, whatever that is, yeah. and take those policies and pay a $2,000 penalty to the government, which in our case is about a million dollars, which is not tax deductible. Is this, is, by the way, is that enough money, particularly since it's not tax deductible, so it would, it, it may, maybe it wouldn't put you out of business, but it would certainly prevent you from expanding and hiring new workers, right? Well, it could do all of that. Uh, you know, and we're in a bad economy right now. We've uh, uh, we've had two years of bad, of, of bumpy roads. It looks like we're going to have a bumpy road this year and on. We've been very blessed to make a profit as a company, but in our company, to pay that kind of penalty, uh, the earnings that we've got are not there to pay that kind of penalty, pay the income tax on the taxable income, excluding the penalty, and still maintain cash flow operations for capital investments that we have to make. Just to, just to tread water, not to expand. All right. Karen, how typical are, uh, are Grady's uh, uh, problems in dealing with Obamacare with other manufacturers? You deal with thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them. Right. This is unfortunately the story I continue to hear as I travel around the country and talk to our members. They are facing extremely high premium increases just since the law was enacted. The plans that they have that we were all told that we could keep are going away. And then to his point, a lot of them are really concerned about what this means in the future for their ability to provide for their employees. Um, the health insurance coverage that they've been doing. Grady, do you blame Obamacare or the coming of Obamacare for, for your health costs going up? Well, our health costs has been increasing for several years. I, uh, something, there needed to be some kind of, of, of action being done to smooth some of these, these bid processes, I think, throughout the over state lines and, and, and some of the complications that at least our insurance carriers are telling us that we've had. We've had increases every year for several years. We've been able to deal with them and manage them mainly by increasing deductibles. Um, the, the policies are still very expensive and they're not affordable for most, uh, for a lot of the people that work for us. And By the way, Grady, let me, let me just stop you there for a second, if I could, because President Obama says that what he has done is, is provide offsets for those new costs in terms of tax credits and the like. Uh, have you seen any of those? Are they helping at all? 
No, I, I don't see any of that. I don't, I don't think anything like that's there. And for, like I say, middle-sized companies uh, like ours, these are, these are new costs uh, that, that return pretty much nothing. And I, I don't know, uh, and, and some businesses in our size and smaller and, and even larger uh, uh, probably won't survive the way the, uh, the bill is written today. Karen Harned, Grady Payne, thank you both for coming in. I appreciate it. Coming up on deck, so you have a half a billion bucks from 